Greetings and welcome to Live from Kaid. Tonight's special guests are the host of Between Two Peers, Magnifica Tule Alori da Ferrara and Her Grace Sir Helga Skaldmare, and featuring a live performance by Mistress Katla Loki Ulfstadter from the Kingdom of the West. <laughs> Why, me? I'm just happy to be here, Master Bjorn of the Northern Sea. And here's your host, Master Laertes McBride. Hello, everyone. Greetings and good evening. I hope you're doing well. And look, I, I, I didn't I didn't mute myself this time. Hey, I, I hope everyone had a good week. And uh, as we do, we're starting off with uh, uh, announcements that are Kaid specific. We'll burn through these right quick. And um, here we go. So first off is uh, don't forget uh, Dry Bergen and Star Coven are having virtual events this weekend, holiday Saturday. Be sure to go to the Facebook pages for those and uh, check out what the activities are and join in. Speaking of which of this Saturday is the Royal Court, online court is starting at 1 p.m. Pacific time. So that's right, block out an hour of excitement of court this Saturday. And then as a reminder, there are no events within the Kingdom of Kaid for the month of August. So we're all gonna be stuck indoors for another month. Uh, with that, uh, that out of the way, I wanna bring my friend in. Let's say hello to Bjorn. Bjorn will be here in just a moment. And hello, Bjorn. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you, sir? I'm good. How was your week? Um, really well. Um, did a lot of teaching of cooking and a lot of learning about Mythic Plus Dungeons and World of Warcraft. Wow. Oh, that sounds good. Stuff was cooking either way. Ha. Um, <laughs> yeah, so... So uh, I, I'm excited about our guest tonight. I am absolutely enthralled. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, uh, we have three veritable uh, pinnacles of their fields from the Kingdom of the West tonight, and I'm just so excited to have them with us. It's it's going to be interesting. I have to say that. So uh, I'm I'm just I'm looking forward to where the conversations will go. I know. So it's a West themed show. So, oh, and speaking of which, uh, we probably need to do this is let's get this out of the way. Um, we just want, we think it's going to be rated PG 13, we hope, uh, with for crude and sexual humor and language. So uh, just be aware, um, this might be just a slightly different show than normal. Uh, true. I want to remind everybody that um, uh, we will do our best to remain the way the show normally has. But every so often, people get very animated and, and well, you know, we're stuck indoors, we're, we're looking at screens, we're using our, our, our keyboards and our microphones. So that's really where most of our uh, exclamations will be coming from. Uh, well, speaking of being on indoors and having to do stuff online, what websites do you have for us this week? Okay, well, the first thing I wanted to talk to people about is that I wanted to try and tie these two websites together, and they are tied together after a fashion. Uh, the first thing I wanted to talk about was um, the Icelandic Saga database. Now, I realize that this is probably a little more finite and, and uh, somewhat a focused website than a lot of the other ones we've had in the past. But this really is one of the best online sources for uh, perhaps one of the largest bodies of the sagas that are available. Um, they're available with English translations. They're available in Icelandic. They're available in modern Scandinavian languages. So modern Icelandic, Norse, Swedish, uh, Danish. And um, uh, it's Igil's saga, Gisla's saga, uh, Hrefkel's saga, Njal's saga, all of these that were originally done through um, oral transmission uh, by the skalds, and then sometime in the 13th or 14th century, we believe that they were written down. Um, this also has uh, related sites that sort of come off of it, but it is just an amazing uh, website that has uh, great indices, uh, downloads, um, I, I, I can't recommend it enough. I think if you are into uh, Scandinavian culture, uh, uh, the Viking sagas, um, and you would like to test your chops on not only how you do with the uh, Old Norse, Icelandic languages, and also uh, with how they sound both in English 
at in, in, in modern Scandinavian languages, then I think this is, this is probably the best resource available online right now. And that leads us to the second online resource. And this also goes back to uh, what uh, our, our beginnings. This is the history of the, of the kingdom of the West. This is uh, a website that talks about the place where SCA members understand the history and traditions of the West Kingdom, and by extension, the origins of the SCA itself. Um, it's a place where there are photographs. Uh, they are even places where people are putting names to those photographs. Um, it, it Artwork, bardic pieces, um, uh, now, I, I want to remind you, though, if you wish to use any of those things, any of those photographs or something, make sure that you uh, give the artist or the photographer, um, they retain the rights to those pieces. So make sure that if you're doing something in, uh, in some other fashion or you're putting them on some of your pages, make certain that you give them the due credit. But really, when you look at the history, and, and we're talking about it, it has bulleted points prehistory, the origins of things, pre-1966, what was going on, what happened in Anna Societatis I, and all the way through until today. Um, they really, both the earlier website and this one on the West, they involve oral tradition that was only later, in some cases much later, uh, written down. And they both deal with uh, history that a lot of us, uh, especially if we study a Scandinavian uh, or Viking history for the, for the former, or anyone who's interested in societal history or the latter, this is a way for us to uh, see what was done and how it was done, how it was codified, how it was collated, and who those early scalds or, or historians were. But they are, they are absolutely priceless. Uh, for those of us that do that kind of research. I'm, I'm that kind of person. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a huge historian. Uh, and, and really quick, this is the third thing I'm going to give a quick shout out. I didn't tell Laertes about this. Um, we lost a true uh, giant in the SCA recently. A lot of you were familiar that um, uh, Edward Ziffern McGendy uh, His Excellency, uh, who was Viscount, uh, he was a prince of, of the Principality of Ontario four different times, passed away. He had a website um, that he had uh, been taking care of for, I, I can't even tell you, um, but it was called whitebelt.com. And uh, so you don't even have to have that on the screen. You will know what that is. And that is the hit. Oh, well, there it is. Thank you, Laertes. It is, it is basically the history of chivalry and how chivalry started within the SCA uh, from the West Kingdom until now. And it talks about who the first members of the chivalry were, both KSCA and MSCA. So who were knights, who were masters of arms, even people who started in one path and then resigned that one and then started a different path, which was something that they did in the early days. Uh, and including um, uh, from 1977 onward, the women that joined those ranks of the chivalry, starting with Trude Lacklandia on to the present, including one of our guests this evening. So we're, um, with his passing, uh, we have lost a true juggernaut of the society, but what he left behind, uh, not just the memories, but what he left behind as far as history, it cannot be overstated. And as a historian, um, it's something that I'm I'm going to continue to utilize, and I hope that you all do as well. So sorry for kind of bringing it down there at the end, Laertes. I apologize for that. Um, that's okay. No, I mean um, he had a dramatic impact over an, an extended period of time across the SCA. So very kind of you to, to bring that out and, and reinforce what he, some of his work that he's done. So. Well, on that light note, who do we have joining us this evening? We are truly blessed to have um, Magnifica Tulia and Sir Helga uh, that will be joining us. They are the uh, hosts of a Facebook and, and YouTube podcast called Between Two Peers. It, is, it shows up on, on Fridays. Uh, they are in the Kingdom of the West, so their, their recording time, their, their scheduling time is, is, a, is good for us as, as people on the West Coast. It's, it's Pacific time. And um, they have a guest come on or, uh, uh, and, and they talk about far ranging subjects. Uh, the topics really have no limit. 
and neither do where those topics go. So I'm, I'm curious to see where we're going this evening. Oh, I've been told where I can go many times. But anyway, <laughs> let's bring them into the show right quick. And uh, here they come. And you know, Bjorn, for this show, I'm going to keep you on screen the whole time because I know you're fanboying over having them here. So uh, it's true. a late birthday present. How about that? Yay. Thank you so oh, much. Let me unmute them before they try to talk. Hold on. And you're unmuted. Thank you very much. Look at that. Hey. I, you know, where the show is going to go, it's going to go some weird places, probably. Uh, yeah, I mean, we should have started a betting pool on how quickly I take it out of the PG-13 realm. Uh, <laughs> it's going to go pretty quick. It never lasts that long. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for joining us tonight. I appreciate you uh, taking time out of your production schedule to join us. Well, and thank you very much for inviting us. We were super excited when you extended the offer. Uh, both of us are fangirls of your guys' show. Uh, and so we're super excited to be here as guests. Also really nervous because your production value, way above ours. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to call this the shameless, the shameless cross-promotion show. So. I like this. Mm -hmm. I like this a lot. <laughs> so um, well, well, we'll just start off easy. Now, um, so y'all do between two peers. You've been doing it about the same amount of time that we've been running our show. Mm -hmm. So uh, I know how Bjorn and I spoke with ours. How, how did y'all get together and decide you wanted to do a show? Well, Tulia, so, do you want to answer this one? Or do you want, do you want the pant a patented Helga answer on this? Well, you know, you give the patented Helga answer and then I'll fill in the gaps. So, uh, so I'm actually shy. I may be loud and obnoxious and really forward about my opinions, but I'm super shy about a bunch of stuff. And so my dear friend Tulia here came to me and said, hey, I want to do this idea. And you're gonna do it with me. Uh, what? <laughs> We're gonna do this thing. Uh, and then we did the thing, and then it stuck. Um, and like, I figured we'd probably last like four, maybe five shows before people were like, "We don't love you anymore. Go away." Both of you are obnoxious assholes. Uh, and uh, instead, we're now like four months in, and we're scheduled through almost the end of September. Yep. Nice. It's taken on a life of its own. Um, I mean, the way I remember it happening was uh, a couple of weeks into um, coronavirus shutdown, uh, the Bay Area closed down a lot sooner than the rest of California. So we've been, and even even we have been in quarantine, quote unquote quarantine, since the end of February, Helga and I, uh, because our office, we work together mundanely, our office happened to be going through a renovation at the end of February. And so they put us on work for home for a couple of weeks and then quarantine happened and then we're just kind of stuck here. So it was a couple of weeks after that point and Helga and I were talking about how we just need to do something. Um, and I think I maybe brought up the topic like, you know, I've always kind of wanted to do like an interview show and uh, and get, you know, just people, random people that we know to answer stupid questions, basically. Like we, we'll think up like these dumb questions and then we'll just throw it at them and we'll see what happens. <laughs> and that's kind of what happened. And, uh, and I think it was just a way for us to amuse ourselves and hopefully amuse some of our friends. And it's turned out to be something that has grown way bigger than either of us ever expected. So world domination's next on the list. Well, that's awesome. <laughs> so, so if you were to describe the show and say like uh, two sentences, what, what, what would be the description of your show to make it uh, uh, be the, describe how unique it is within all these other little conversational shows that seem to be happening? I'm throwing Helga under the bus on that. <laughs> well, I'm going to say that we're the, we're the Jerry Springer of all the SCA shows that are going on right now. However, we also try to make sure that while we're having fun, uh, both Tuli and I come from very mixed backgrounds. Uh, we both been playing the SCA very bit. I totally went over two sentences. I'm sorry. We're the Jerry Springer of uh, SCA shows that will also tackle some of the super hard conversations and are not afraid to do it. <laughs> now, we have one of your planted audience members asking a question. Oh. Um, where do we find your show and are the early epi episodes still available? Yes. Uh, you can find our show on YouTube and on Facebook. All of the shows are should be mirrored on both platforms. It's Between Two Peers on Facebook. And if I'm not mistaken, it's Between Number Two Peers, I think on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And then it's also Between Two Peers on YouTube. But if I correct can think my, I never pay attention to this stuff when I set it up. So I set all this stuff up and then forgot immediately. So <laughs> look for Between Two, yeah, at Between Two Peers on Facebook. And I believe it's also the same for YouTube. 
So hey, I'm also posting links right now. <laughs> Very nice. So, um, so how do you select a guest for your show? Do you just kind of go through your address book or? Uh, we go between randomly select like so we've got we have a pretty wide friend base uh and so we try to make sure that we are rolling between uh martial peerages service peerages and um arts peer, uh, arts and then uh non belt and so we we look for our friends list and we've had a bunch of volunteers from around the known world and so we just add them to a list and then we kind of try to categorize that way um so we can have a a pretty big expanse uh on the show yeah, we tried to mix it up um, early on. We we got a lot of commentary about how, it, or asking if it was just a show for peers because the first couple of people that we had on um, were all peers of some form or another. And it, it really just accidentally worked out that way because we were mostly pulling from people that we knew would be game. And you get to a certain point in your SDA career where, you know, everybody you know has a peer, has a peerage. <laughs> so, uh, Helga and I both have this kind of problem where the vast majority of our friends are peers. And so it just accidentally was that way. But now we've tried to make it a little bit more like, you know, branch out and try to make more non-peer friends and bring them on the show and, you know, have their perspective and, and inform, you know, their experiences. Okay, Bjorn, go for it. I know you have some stuff you want to talk about. One of the things that I first watched, uh, one, of, one of my favorite shows was the one that you had with um, with Anna. And then another one of my favorite shows that you had was just one just recently with Logan. And they're both were shows that were uh, people that had they have not as of yet received a peerage. But they're, uh, the questions that you asked, the questions that your audience members asked um, were all very poignant. Uh, you, you bounced back and forth between very silly and very serious. Um, the people that you have, um, Baby Ninja, Lady of the Lake, all of the folks that work on your show, how do you determine um, when to kind of switch, uh, flip the switch and go from uh, more gravity, more serious stuff to more comical stuff? Because you seem to have a really nice balance between the two. Uh, so we have a huge, we have a, we have a huge list. Uh, I've got a running Google Doc that both Cooley and I maintain of all the questions that have been submitted um, and all the ones that have been used. Uh, and then uh, Wednesday, we go through and we select. We both select a series of questions, and then uh, she trusts me enough to organize them. Um, and I just put it. I actually put it in an order uh, to do like kind of introductory questions, the heavy hitter questions, and then recovery questions. Um, and we use the submitted questions. And then the lady of the lake actually comes and kicks it with me up next to me before the show, and she reads all the questions to kind of get a feel for where she needs to step in. So she listens for whatever question is going on and then she's downstairs hanging out watching on the show like answering questions that are coming up in the chat feed um and then she comes up and interrupts especially and, but she's paying attention constantly to see both how tulia and i are doing on the show um and if she if she sees like either a guest tank or one of us tank or something else like that she actually comes in at that moment it doesn't really matter where it is in the show we just trust her gut on that um, and then Baby Ninja and all them keep everything just rolling smoothly. So if one of us stumble, they'll actually push the show behind the scenes to get it going forward again. So Alice is sort of, sort of like, um, like a, literally like a, a, a body <laughs> protector. Yay! Uh, uh, like a moderator and also uh, a guide when necessary. Yes. Oh. So, She's a comedic relief. She's absolutely a comedic relief when things get too hot and heavy. Yeah, there. You literally put this in another language for me to read? <laughs> oh, it's spite sprinkles. Uh, oh no, it's slappy squirrel. Oh my gosh, I totally read that wrong. <laughs> I thought it said spite sprinkles too. You're right, slappy squirrel. <laughs> uh, I love her. <laughs> so, um, you say it must be nice to have a staff to run your show. Yeah, you know, we we don't have that budget. Uh, we just, that was an accident. Uh, one of the coolest things about the show is uh, Helga and I were going to just just add, you know throw it together, kind of figure it out. Neither of us were super comfortable with the whole live streaming stuff. Um, but uh, but after like two or three shows, uh, we had. Baby Ninja and Clarius both contacted us 
um, and Carius is a good friend of ours who lives in the kingdom with us. Um, and he's very tech, you know, tech savvy. Uh, and Baby Ninja was, I think, just a, actually a friend of Helga's um, who I hadn't known, I hadn't met yet. Um, and then he, but he's like, hey, let's get together. Let's talk about how we can make the show look, you know, more polished. And we're like, okay, <laughs> production crew. Um, and they just tacked on and they've been with us ever since. And they are indispensable to the operation now. They are oh. crucial. Uh, it's also really funny when stuff goes very wrong behind the scenes. <laughs> Not so behind the scenes sometimes. We can hear them and nobody else can because they're, they're on a muted channel. Uh, and it is just hilarity when you like when we're staring at the screen trying to figure out what's going on. It's because typically Baby Ninja is like hucking his headphones, or Carius is like staring at us. Like, did you just really do that? You just really did that. <laughs> oh. Um, also, I would like to note that I missed what uh, the Lady of the Lake put on the back of this. Is she said you missed the best one, and she is referring to your Animaniacs in the, behind the scenes. Oh, I know. Right. <laughs> I live, I live in Burbank, so I see their house every day when I drive past the water tower. So. Oh, that's awesome. Um, but, uh, you know, our show, which is technically flawless every week. Obviously. Um, <laughs> right? I'm sure the viewers will report that. Hang, hang on. <laughs> he had to drink on that one. <laughs> but uh, so who would, who would you say uh, was the guest that surprised you most? Mm. You get to go first on that one, Julia. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I always say that the, the show never, like every show is the best show we've ever done. Like it can't be, you know, the next the next one, it's probably gonna be good, but it will not be anywhere near as epic as this show that we just did. And then the thing happens, the next week comes around and blows my mind again. <laughs> So it's kind of a joke in my own little world of like, oh, every guest is the best guest. Um, I guess the one that surprised me, surprised me the most. Uh, okay. I don't think it surprised me, but I remember just being really, like I didn't really know the person before we, we did it. And that was uh, Count Seto. Um, I knew of him, but I didn't actually know him. And so we had a, a little get together uh, a couple of days before the show where we just got on Zoom and, you know, chatted and everything. And of course he turns the charm on immediately. So I'm like, automatically this is gonna be fine. And uh, when we get on the show and it just turned out to be a really delightful uh, interview. And I had a lot of fun and he was he, he just easy person to talk to. And so I don't think it was necessarily surprising but not really knowing him and knowing what I was getting into, um, I was pleasantly surprised. Oop. All right. I'm All right. Have... What was that? No, no, go for it. You're good. Oh, um, I'm going to have to go with uh, one of the more surprising ones. Is So I knew she was super snarky. Uh, I'm going to go with Claire. I think <laughs> Claire was one of the most delightful, just snark filled and truthful. Hi, Claire, you got a drink. Helga, you got a drink. You used her mundane name. Oops. <laughs> But and held from uh, couldn't help. Sorry, from Awartha, and she came <laughs> on and just yeah. leveled us over and over and over again. Uh, and she is such a delight to have as a host or not, as a guest uh, that at some point I'm gonna like pin her down to come be like a, a guest host to yeah. just like run a show because she can she can lay on the snark. Also, she's really hyper intelligent and funny as hell. She's she's uh we've been Ken held fangirls for years. And so we know that she'd be probably up for it. So we were like, okay, it's a sure thing. She's one of the earlier interviews that we've done, like the fourth or something interview that we did. And uh, yeah, four. And uh, she she was delivered on every account. So yeah. That's awesome. So do you have a few more questions when you start wrapping this up? I, I do. Um, so uh, you both have um, various experiences in the SCA that um, lend you towards uh, knowing different facets of the society. I mean, you're from the West, uh, but you, you've played in different yeah, places. So we were like, okay, it's a sure thing. She's one of the uh, earlier. <laughs> and uh, um, so uh, you know, Tule, you're uh, a Laurel and Helga, you're uh, a Knight and also a Pelican. So you have kind of a, a well-rounded understanding of the martial, the service and the arts. Are there any aspects of the society that you're not quite 
that you don't really know how to tackle in the show or the things that you're not really sure how to address yet? I was like, just keep it on Helga. <laughs> I feel like this is going to be an ego moment. I, I'm actually going to say there's many things I don't know how to address. Uh, and so what I'm actually going to say is uh, I tried to own up to this in an uh, earlier episode. Uh, I think it's 12. Uh, is that I'm still learning how to tackle cultural appropriation um, and how it applies to our, our group. Uh, because very white. Um, and so I'm trying to make sure that I'm more educated on that. And I can't speak with any authority to that right now. I have to, like, it doesn't matter how many peerages I have or how many, you know, how many years I've been playing. That's something that I am still, um, I'm still just feeling out and around uh, because I'd really, really like to do a Scythian persona. Like, I'd love to do a Scythian persona, but until I understand cultural appropriation, I don't feel that I can go down that road um, with a good educated mindset. Um, and so that's that's one of the harder ones to tackle for me. And I have to sit back a lot and listen and very much so be a student of our our society and the world right now. Um, I would be I have to be honest, and I don't know how to tackle anything. <laughs> I'm winging it every day. Um, I just want to be a nice person, and I want people to have a good time. And it's it is really contentious right now. So. The, the broader discussion politics and everything in, in the mundane world. And there's been a lot of discussion online um, about not just discussion, but like outright fights uh, about how um, the old adage that I grew up with in the SCA was that you leave the mundane world at the gate. Um, so mundane politics or beliefs or, you know, whatever um, didn't apply and didn't count in the SCA. Like once you cross that threshold into the event, it was all, magically wiped away. Um, and the reality is that that's not true. And that is absolutely something that uh, people bring with them um, for good and for ill. And I think learning how to deal with that, I think that society is grappling with this right now, um, not just me and not just you know my friends, um, but I think we're all, uh, especially I can speak for myself and, and my close friends. It's something, especially with Helga, and I always have conversations about this. Um, it's something that we really are trying to understand and be respectful of and recognize um, that everybody's experience in the real world is absolutely something that influences their experience in the SCA. Um, and that identifying those uh, aspects of the real world that are negative um, and making sure that we have protection set up against those things inside the SCA can improve the game for everybody. Now he is muted. So I am muted. So we did no the time. Thank you. I, I didn't want to get the show get away with us before me having come back unmuted. So, um, so Bjorn, just one more question, and then we're going to toss it to the game. So. Excellent. So my, my final question, and I'm, I'm going to try and, and take an homage to a question, a similar question that you would ask or have, have asked on your show. So you have to perform a heist of the Hope Diamond. <laughs> which one of you is the mastermind and which one of you will be driving the getaway dirigible? Because it's got to be a dirigible. It can't just be a getaway car. Oh, how goes the mastermind? Uh, I'd probably be the getaway dirigible driver. <laughs> I'm, gonna put, I'm gonna put it the same. <laughs> Helga and I understand our strengths really well. <laughs> it it also helps that I'm her manager in real life, so I've got like a one up on the like being in charge of the weird bullshit we're doing. <laughs> Outstanding. Okay, so we're birthing that question because, you know, I'm going to ask, uh, what about you two? <laughs> uh, well, I'm certainly not lighter than air, but I would have to say that uh, given his uh, puissant skill at arms, his intelligence, his gentle demeanor, and his worthy mean, I would say probably Laertes would be the, the mastermind. And I would be the dirigible driver um, because in the past I have actually been mistaken for uh, a gas bag. And uh, I think 
I think I think that's how that would go. What what do you say, oh boy? So Bjorn, you're basically saying that you're pinking and I'm the brain. <laughs> I think so, Laertes, but Burlap chafes me so. <laughs> All righty. Well, it is now time for the trivia game, which I know you both are looking so forward to based on the conversation. <laughs> So, Bjorn, um, what are we calling the game this week? We're calling it We're Number One. Oh, God. <laughs> well, you know, if you've ever been to a grand court, the West Kingdom likes to remind everyone <laughs> repeatedly. In the West. <laughs> the West of the First Kingdom, right? I mean, ad nauseum. We well, get I drank it. before we all started. I drank. I, I, I pre-drank. Pre -drink. I'm out of a drink. Ugh. So um, I just want to ask some more questions about firsts in the SDA and just, um, yeah, just see what you know. So are you all ready? All right. Oh, no, okay. I am so not ready for that. I'm actually like, now I'm like, okay, this might be something that serial, serial killers or early SCA history. I could probably do this. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay, so we're going to start off easy. Um, what's the first kingdom named after where they are located on the map of the U.S.? Well, the West Kingdom? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> this can't be that easy. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Had a lot of thought into that kingdom name. Um, okay. So now let's talk about what was the first kingdom not named after where they are located on the map of the U.S.? Oh, that would probably be Aiton Belt. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, no, I mean, well, <laughs> less said about that, the better. Um, I knew one. <laughs> congratulations. But I'm right. um, okay, so uh, which was the first kingdom with same sex royals? Uh, are we talking baronial? No, royals. Uh, Unless you're doing something different in the West. Okay, so, so if we're talking uh, Prince. Principality level, that would be neck and neck between Ontier and the West, I think. Ontier stepped up first. Yeah, Ontier stepped up first. But if I you're going with Baronial, then it was paid. And then if you're going with uh, Crown, it is uh, Kaid, I think. Right? Nope. Was it the uh, Crown? Though? Okay, so there was someone before Crown. Okay, who was it? Who was it? Oh, it's someone uh, or the Kingdom. Yeah, it was a kingdom. You're you're right so far. Well, it is, it's he so, currently has a set. No, it's it's somewhere but, in in the middle of the United States, <laughs> like in the middle. I'm narrowing it down. I, 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 I can give, I can give you a I can give you a clue. I can Does give it come with an A? Uh, they're, they're one of the kingdoms that decided to have a direction in their a direction in their name. Uh, North Shield. Oh my gosh! Yeah. There you go. <laughs> okay. Sorry, Northfield viewers. Obviously, the West doesn't care. Um, no, we're just going with she is 100% proving right now that she's pinky out of this. But she's the smart one. Oh, okay. And then, uh, okay, so last one, uh, just because it's the West, I know. So, um, what was the first kingdom to recognize rapier fighters with a white skull? No, not the West. Not the West. Not the West. <laughs> not the West. I would say a Calentier. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I would like to say that on behalf of everyone who knows the answer, for those of you that know it is not Kalantir, you are required to drink not one shot, but an entire bottle. Ah, uh, that was pain. Um, I didn't know. This one I did not know. No, it I was. Kalantir is a big supporter of the, of the White Scars, always have been. So. <laughs> well, what, what do you think about that comment, Bjorn? I have to say that since Kalantir never had white scarves, I'm going to... Oh, my God, you're so right. Uh, can I say, can I, I I'm going to answer, and I'm going to say that it's probably the, the kingdom that invented it, and I'm going to say Antiora. Oh, Antiora. my God, you are correct. God damn it, I knew it was one of those two. Wow. So, uh, <laughs> not, not, okay, so when was, here's a fun one. When was the white scarf, uh, when was that treaty signed? Oh, my gosh, it was um, the 80s, right? No, 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 it was mid nineties. Yeah. No. It had to, no it actually, actually, I'm willing to bet it's probably circa 1996. I think I'm you're completely incorrect because I'm the 54th white scarf of Ponce Diora, and I was made in 1995. I said circa 1996. So. No. 
was was the White Scarf Treaty signed in the West in 1996? Yeah, yeah. You know, that's, that's what I was wondering when the International White Scarf. Okay, so, so the first the, here's the boring part. Okay, so the first kingdom to sign the White Scarf Heraldic Treaty, that's really all it is, was Outland. And then it went, Kaid was number six. The West never signed the Heraldic Conflict Treaty because they made the Western White Scarf because the West doesn't doesn't sign uh, treaty I documents. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, all I have to do is about this about the West right now. <laughs> so, okay, can I can uh, I just as someone? What do you mean? There, for those younger people, um, her grace was referring to raising the flag. Yes, uh, raising the flag. <laughs> The West has historically been very behind the times when it comes to rape. We're trying very hard to catch up. <laughs> so I'm actually super curious when the when the international treaty was signed versus the first one, because I believe the first white scarf was done before I was born. Oh yeah, I'm I'm sure. Yeah, that was Tyvo. Have our moon dragon. Yeah. Yep. So uh, uh, we there's one um there's one question I have to ask before we let you go because it just amuses me. But be sure to check the comments because there's other questions for both of you. But my favorite question is, and I don't know how this is going to work, but I have to ask it. Um, what's your favorite curse word? Helga's full of really good ones. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> anybody for that is under, like, anybody of your impressionable age or mental capacity, please cover your ears. Um, cause I won't use any of the, the normal words that like people would expect to fall out of my mouth, but twat waffle. Twat waffle is one of my favorite curse words because it's a visual. Either that, or you just call them a flaccid dick. Nice. <laughs> uh, I would go with something, you know, it's whatever comes out of my mouth when I stub my toe. Like I can't just like bring it up organically. It has to be like something catastrophic in my life. I mean, things like, you know, uh, mouth breathing fuck stick, like stuff like that kind of occasionally. Um, I don't know, Helga, have I, I've used some good ones on you before. Wow. <laughs> There's a lot of cuss words. Like, I'm a cussy wow. person, I really am. I, I swear a lot. And my mother tried desperately to, you know, make sure that her, her daughter who she was raising to be in a Jane Austen novel never said any salty words whatsoever and it just did not work. <laughs> it's gotten well, used to it now. Before we let you go, just one last opportunity. Where do we where would we find your show at? Absolutely. Oh uh so either on YouTube you can search between two peers and it'll come up because we apparently have enough followers now that they gave us our own little thing. Uh yeah. and then on Facebook the same thing is if you just search between two peers, either between two peers spelled out all the way or between two peers, both of them will show up in your search engine. Uh, please follow and like, uh, check out our videos, uh, and we're happy to cross post for Live in Kaid. I think what you guys are doing is amazing. One, one last thing. So on Pacific time, when do people want to, uh, when do they want to tune into your show? 7 p.m. Pacific. Do the math if you're in some other time zone. We're not responsible <laughs> for that. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for taking time out of your week to join us. I, this was a blast. I had such a great time. Uh, I know that uh, Bjorn's going to need to towel off after this one. So. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I horrifically insulted Antonora's rapier community. So on behalf of me, who is terrible at rapier history, apparently, <laughs> I apologize. Get get this, though. I will say this. Uh, Laertes, you are the first person who's gotten me to blush on screen. And um, it, wasn't, it wasn't a dirty joke. It wasn't a, a, an innuendo. It was, ah, uh -huh, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, I have to put a credit card number to get back on a reaction from a woman. No, but no, anyway. No, I drink to you, sir. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Well, you all have a great rest of your evening, and we will see you all soon. I look forward to your next show. Absolutely. Thank you very much. And uh, I hope you guys look forward to eventually being on our show. Oh, we're going to be a rodeo. Oh, yeah. I can't Maybe. wait for that. All right. Oh, looks they have to go. I'll see y'all later. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That was a lot of fun. That was. I, now, we need to apologize to Kala because we went a little long. She's been very patient waiting for it. Oh, she's like, yeah, whatever. I'm having fun too. So um, who do we have up next?
one of my dearest friends uh, in the SCA. Um, she is a member of the Pelican. She is a member of the Laurelet. Um, it is Her Excellency uh, Katla Loki Ulfstadter. Uh, she has been a bard for a, a long time in, in the SCA, um, Bard of the West, I think Bard of the Mists. She is uh, just a, a truly phenomenal performer. And um, I'm just extremely honored that we have these true powerhouses of, of ladies of the West with us this evening. She, I'm just really excited to have her with us. All righty. Well, thank you, Bjorn. I'll put you down where you, I'm not going to put you down because that would be sad. But we'll, we'll, we'll pick the video so we can enjoy the performance and let's welcome her to the show. And here she comes. Yep. And you'll be all right now. Hello. Hello. Well, thank, thank you for being so patient. We went a little long. Yeah. Hi, I was just enthralled watching. It was fine. I mean, <laughs> if they would have known about Aunt's tour and the wise car phone, it so funny. <laughs> You know. I didn't know either, but you know. <laughs> yeah. okay. But um, so, so I appreciate you coming on the show tonight. Thank you. And um, as Bjorn was talking about, you've been uh, uh, one of the figures of leading Bardic out in the West for a while. Uh, I wouldn't say that. I say I do things here and there. There are a lot more, several other bards who are doing a lot more more often than me. I think. Nice. But so, yeah. So how, how long how long have you been doing Bardic in the West? Um, I've been singing since I could breathe. Uh, I got into the SCA in 1990, and at that point, I was mostly doing like traditional Irish stuff. I didn't really get into period music um, until I was with my then Lord, uh, Maestro Antonio, and that was about 2000. And the, uh, the first song, the medieval song that I really got into was La Chante Mer uh, by the Comtesse de Vie, and that was my jam for a while. So that was what opened my, my door to period music. But then I went to a Bardic Collegium in Kaid, about 2004, 2005, when I was the first time bar of the West, and I met Bjorn and Lady Lila, uh, Lila uh, Zilia was what she was now, now she's Lila in the East, and they are the two powerhouses that really, really helped me get into a medieval music mode, uh, singing-wise and presentation-wise, and trying to really work on that, so, so Bjorn's my buddy. <laughs> Fantastic. So you've been a uh, Bard of the West. Yes. Now, no, out in, in, in Kaye, there's a competition that they've been doing. And, okay. uh, is it similar how it's you get recognized? Ours is, ours is yearly. Um, there's usually about four pieces, kind of dependent on who's planning the pieces. Uh, but yeah, so it's it's done yearly, and the tenure is a year long. So I've done that three times, and Bard of Miss once, and Bard of Sonoma once. Good times. Very nice. Now, people are impressed by all the swords in the background, by the way. My best friend, Antonio, my friend Antonio, I live with he and his wife, and those are all his. It's his house. Right. People usually walk in and say they don't want to steal from us. Exactly. Yeah, you, you don't break into this house. Um, so uh, what pieces are you going to perform for us this evening? I'm going to do two of my own. Uh, the first one's called The Hunt. And actually, my friend Antonio wrote the chorus for it, and I said, gosh, this is great, and I just kind of ran with it. Um, the second piece that I will be doing is The Sea's Mercy, and it's based on a, a Swedish folk song, it's tune-wise. And uh, that one's a little more sad, but I, I, both of them had been written for bar, or bard competitions. Oh. So, well, cool. Well, I'm going to turn the floor over to you, and thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, my friends, I will apologize. I read from the book because my memory is not the greatest. Uh, but this is called The Hunt. Again, one of my originals, uh, barring the chorus that my friend Antonio did. Summer has outlived a piece, unfurled battle plan. For you shall hunt the enemy and not the woodland stag. Put aside your south and brave, as sport gives way to war. Put aside the quiet life, the enemy is at the door. The autumn leaves fell thick and fast, as summer turned to cold. You hunted with the hounds and horse, the horned heart and the doe. But when the hunt was over, a new horn blew the call. For your king had roused his men to arms, 
and sing you from your hall. No more would your gay laughter sound among the fields of home. For the hunt you followed surely would now lead you to your doom. Summer has outlived the peace unfurled battle flag. For you shall hunt the enemies and not the woodland stag. Put aside your falcon brave as peace gives way to war. Put aside the quiet life, the enemy is at the door. Your honor and your brave resolve won you great renown. Your youth and love of battle would make you the king's own hound. And now your smile would no longer shine on bright autumn days. The light has left your eyes of blue. Your skin is as the clay. For one so fair and young of years, the hunt has taken its toll. The enemy proved far stronger than the mighty stag or boar. Summer has outlived the peace, unfurled the battle flag. For you shall hunt the enemy and not the woodland stag. Put aside your falcon brave as sport gives way to war. Put aside the quiet life, the enemy is at the door. The autumn leaves all red and gold, their colors now dimmed in mist. No longer can the memory hold of lips that once I kissed. Your body lies beneath the earth, you never shall hunt again. Since the day the war horn called to you and made you the king's own man. Thank you. Uh, my second song is again one of mine, uh, but based on a Swedish folk tune, traditional. In darkest night she walks the shore along the stormy seas and prays the ocean will keep him safe from the terrors of the deep. She begs the sea, she begs the sea for mercy. They say this of the mermaid kind that ships can draw them in. A human lover they seek to find, a mortal love to win. To drag below, or to keep below, no mercy. But every night the lady weeps until the rolling sea. She prays no maid her love will keep to the way she makes her plea to bring him home, oh, bring him home, oh, mercy. And so the mer folk hear her ask, and the night his ship goes down. The sailor breaths a wooden cast. While well, those around him drown, pulled under him, but still he swims, shown mercy. For faithfulness, its own reward, as dawn shines o'er the wave. The sailor bold is returned to her, by a passing ship was saved, spared by the sea. Oh, spared was he by mercy. So every day the lady sings her praises to the sea. Her thankfulness and gifts she brings, the mirth 
folks offering for saving him, for giving them their mercy. Thank you. So amazing. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, I think Bjorn wants to come in and say something too. Oh, yeah. As always, I love listening to my friends sing very much. Thank you. And you know, I, I've said this to uh, a few of our performers. I know it's just, it must be super tough and odd performing to a piece of glass as opposed to performing around a fire or with your friends around. <laughs> but, but the ability yeah, to. Yeah with your talent sure. and, and engagement and, and and what you bring to it to, to bring us in through this piece of glass so that we're actually there around the fire it, it so it speaks so much about your talents so uh thank you so much for coming on the show thank you. Thank you. and um, you're always welcome and, i appreciate that and uh, like i say hopefully uh, sometime soon we'll be able to see each other in person so absolutely i hope so thank you so much dear friend thank you have a have a great evening, and we'll talk to you again. Thank you. you too. What a fun show. Mm -hmm. It definitely was. Wow. Who knew the West had so much talent and entertainment in it? Uh, you leave people alone for 54 years, and this is what happens. <laughs> True. So um, uh, who do we have lined up for next week? Well, I'll tell you who for the interview. And uh, So for next week, we're actually going to be talking to Baron Jeffrey, from the, who is the Baron of Western Seas. So we will have a view of what's going on out in with our friends in Hawaii, and uh, to be in a Palatine uh, barony, because originally I thought it was a Palpatine barony, and there was Sith lords involved. But um, and then who do we have for uh, for our bardic performance? We have uh, from the East Kingdom, uh, Drake the Bard, who will be performing with us. Um, he is uh, someone that's been doing a lot of great um, music and a lot of teaching online uh, through the mediums of Facebook and elsewhere. And is just a, a phenomenal uh, person in addition to being a performer. So we're very excited to have Drake with us this next week. Yeah, sounds like a great show. We're going to be coast to coast. We'll have... Uh... Hawaii and the East Coast on. So it should be a fun show. Well, my friend, thank you again for for uh, all your help this week. It was great to see a bunch of your friends on the show. It was a lot of fun. And I'm, I'm totally, I'm, I'm so geeked out right now. I can't even begin to say how much this has just been a wonderful. Thank you again for letting me be a part of the show. I, I'm so excited. Oh. Uh, uh, hey, bud, we're in it together. So anyway, uh, everyone, thank you for watching. Thank you, Bjorn. And again, tune in next week when, once again, we're going to be live from Kaid. We'll see you then. Or not. <laughs> <laughs>